A blessed good morning to all. It is great to be here today with you all, virtually, as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll begin today's service with praise and worship, led by the Valley Methodist Church Youths. Come, let's all join our voices and praise our Lord God for the continued blessings that he bestows among us.
Responsive reading taken from Sam chapter 60 by Odia Bryan, followed by a selection in song by the Brathwaite family. Good morning, church. The responsive reading is taken from Psalm 16, verses 1 to 11, and it reads thus Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord, I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another god multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood, I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also, my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. It is 
We now have a scripture reading taken from Acts chapter 2, verse 14, and then verses 22 to 32 by Angelique Smith, followed by another selection in dance by Safia Vantapool. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, verse 14 and 22 to 32. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law, but God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not be abandoned by my soul. You will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us today. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus, God raised up, and of that all of us are witness. Here ends the reading. What you're going through is not the end of you, it's the beginning. Still in trust his plan, he'll make a way somehow. But while you're going through, let Jesus work on you. There's nothing else to do but be.
scripture reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 9 by Philomena John Marie followed by a hymn of meditation day by day we magnify thee Good morning brothers and sisters in Christ the New Testament scripture reading will be taken from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 9 and it reads as follows Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for our salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. Even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that though perishable is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Here ends the reading. brought to us by one of our very own youths, Miss Keisha Dawson. Let's encourage her as she continues to do great things for our Lord. And let's not forget to encourage all of the youths that took part in today's service. I begin this message today with a question. How can we not just live, but live a life of discipline and integrity? 
Through the book of Psalms, we get a glimpse into the character of God and the relationship of how we should respond to God in living a life of discipline and integrity. In Psalm 16, we are reminded of truth. God is a refuge for his people and God ultimately protects his people from the stain of sin and the sting of death through the death of his son. This Psalms also focuses on God as the giver, provider of all good things, which clearly points out to Jesus being the one through whom all good things come. As believers, we see God as a protector and the one who gives wise counsel to his people. Psalm 16 is also a prophecy about Jesus that was fulfilled when he rose from the dead, proving that God, our Heavenly Father, did not abandon his son. As a result, we are also reminded that God will never leave us or forsake us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for sending your son to die for us on the cross. And even in these times, we give you thanks for sparing our lives and protecting us. We ask you, O oh God, to go before me as I bring your word and that may all lives be touched. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God has made known the path of life. God has shown us very clearly that the path of life is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way to the Father and there is no life without him. What that really means is that without Jesus, the world is dead because of sin, but only through Jesus can the world live. Only through Jesus, those who believe can live. I go back to my question. How can we not just live, but live, life, live lives of discipline and integrity? In order to do any job right, we must have the right tools. It's just like going to school without your books or pen. Teachers are always on us to be prepared and pack our bags ahead of time so that we have our tools. For adults, it's the same. How can you call a plumber to fix a problem and show up with a paracetamol? Every solution of a problem needs the right tools. Likewise, there are tools all believers need to have in order to live a life of discipline and integrity. Therefore, what is discipline? Discipline is defined as the orderly or prescribed conduct or pattern of behavior. Words associated with discipline are self-control, which is a fruit of the spirit, and consistency. Then what is integrity? Integrity is living by what God says is right, according to his standards, which he has created. All words and actions must match God's truth. So can I ask you, how do we gain integrity? How do we live a life of both discipline and integrity? First, let's look at discipline. Everyone has something that they're good at. And your goal should be to improve these talents each day. Let us stay, say for instance, I would like to become a great singer. To achieve this goal, I need to take action, such as joining a choir, hiring a vocal coach to seek these lessons. I would have to put in some serious work, training my voice to where I know it can be. I know most young men are interested in sports. How do you think LeBron James or Odell Beckham became such great players? Well, I am certain that they spent countless hours in the gym and in the field training and working hard daily. To achieve these goals, one must exercise discipline, training regularly to perfect talents that we possess. Most time, many believers live in guilt because they focus on training their physical bodies, but very often believers neglect to train their spiritual bodies. Why is that? Don't all spiritual bodies deserve as much attention as all physical bodies? Yes, 
it surely does let's take a look at apostle paul he demonstrated discipline in his devotion to god in first corinthians 9 verse 24 to 27 he actually compares the physical discipline required by an athlete to spiritual fitness in verse 25 he declares athletes exercise self-control in all things that they do it to receive a perishable wreath but not imperishable inheritance in first timothy 4 7 to 8 paul continues to urge that we train ourselves in godliness for while physical training is of some value godliness is valuable in every way and that it holds promise for both the present life and the life to come so to be spiritually disciplined involves engaging regularly in spiritual activities such as prayer reading the bible bible study and fellowship with god and others both in those both those in the world and believers now let's look at integrity our recent circuit youth bible studies touched on two well-known men of the bible who demonstrated the utmost integrity to god job and daniel job was described as a man who had it all a wealthy man but also righteous god-fearing man who shunned sin job's steadfastness to god seemed unparalleled to anything that it seemed even god himself bragged on job when he told satan in job chapter 1 verse 8 have you considered my servant job there is no one like job on the earth blameless and upright man who fears god and turns away from evil can you imagine the kind of man job must have been for our almighty father to brag on him like that can god brag like that on you i'm sure growing up most of us would have heard the saying you've got faith like job job was described as a man who had it all he was wealthy but also righteous he was god fearing and he also shunned sin job's steadfastness to god seemed unparalleled to anything that it seemed even god himself brag on job when he told satan in job chapter 1 verse 8 have you considered my servant servant job there is no one like job on the earth a blameless and upright man who fears god and turns away from evil can you imagine the kind of man job must have been for almighty god to brag on him like that can god brag like that on you i'm sure most of us growing up must have heard the saying you've got faith like job that saying would, would be used towards anyone who seemed to have more patience and tolerance when things aren't going the best in their lives. And certainly, Job had his share of experiencing tremendous losses and illnesses. Job lost just about everything. He lost his cattle, every sheep, oxen, and camel. He lost all his servants. He even lost his children could you believe that after lo losing all of your wealth and children this man never wavered in his faith job continued trusting in god despite every trials and tribulations which of us has that kind of faith how many of us still keep the faith and trust and love for god during tough times how many of us can say, like Job, that we came into this world with nothing and we will leave this world with nothing? When we lose a piece of jewelry or whatever we think is important to us, we operate like it's the end of the world. But see, this man who had every physical thing, never wanted for nothing, and all he wanted at the end of the day, after losing every physical thing, was his spiritual reward or if we had faith like Job a lot of times we think that we suffer 
God doesn't like us or he can't be real. But why do we have to look at it like that? God is a God that uses suffering to bring out his character of righteousness within us. Sometimes God puts us through the ringer so that we can learn to be more dependent on him. Like even in this time of lockdown, maybe he just wants to get our attention because we're so busy doing everything else but worshiping him, going everywhere else but church. When we put everything else before God, he gets jealous. Just like how we feel when a parent say, pays more attention to another sibling other than us. That same way you may feel is how God feels when we don't respect who he is. He must come for us. Brothers and sisters, we can't question God's motives. His ways are beyond what humans can understand. When we lose, God multiplies our loss even more than what we are blessed with. Currently, we are studying the book of Daniel. I'm sure many of us wanted to know why Daniel would be sentenced to death if he didn't do anything wrong. He actually did everything right. A lot of us ask this question, but what did I do to get punished like this? Sadly, we live in a world where people get rewarded for bad behavior and punished for good, righteous behavior. Jesus told his followers to expect both suffering and persecution and that if such things happen, we must pray. So far, we were able to see that Daniel lived a life of discipline and integrity. Daniel was consistent in his, pray, his praying and always spoke to God, seeking his wisdom and guidance. Daniel was spiritually fit. He didn't let friends distract him or pressure him into doing wrong. Instead, Daniel was wise and made doing what was right his number one priority. He had an attitude of honesty, trust, and faith in God, even under pressure. His character was near spotless. Many of us tell lies and go out of our way to do bad things to people. We use a person's weakness against them, and we may even bribe them like the, how Daniel was bribed. Daniel decided to stand up for the light of God and not for the darkness of the world. What is darkness in our life that stops us from shining God's light? Yes, when we shine God's light, we become a threat to darkness. But always remember that we live a life of integrity. It will reveal the deceitful among us, the, self the selfish among us, and we will be targeted because we can no longer help the enemy fulfill his agenda. Stand up, strong in Jesus, just like Daniel did, even in a lion's den. Daniel didn't fuss, he didn't fight, or even get angry to everything being done to him. Daniel knew that God was his refuge and his protector. Stand up strong in Jesus, just like Daniel did, even in a lion's den. Daniel didn't fuss or fight or even got angry to everything being done to him. Daniel knew as his new God as his refuge and protector when he continued to calmly and quietly stick to his values and trust and obey in God. So clearly we can see that choosing to live a life of discipline and integrity means that we must be faithful and trust in God, regardless of our circumstances. We must practice what we preach. We must accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and ask him to mold us into who he would like us to be in order to fill our purpose on this earth. Let us ask him for the gift to be connected with the Holy Spirit, which will empower us to live lives of discipline and integrity. The celebration of Youth Week this year was unique, but it was also exciting and spirit-filled. 
We had activities every day of this week, including a youth forum, Bible games, community outreach, Bible study, and chats with the ministers. These activities helped us grow and reveal ministries we can develop and the fellowship we can share even when we are confined to our homes. Despite everything that was going on around us, whether we are doing schoolwork online or even doing chores, we had to be disciplined to make it a priority to come into, group, into the group chat to participate in this week's activities. For some of us, even that, even that was too much to ask. We weren't even disciplined to focus on activities geared just for us. Messages from God in different forms just for one week. So we see we have a lot of work to do in forming the right disciplines to live lives of integrity. Today, as we come to the end of our virtual week under the theme, living a life of discipline and integrity, I encourage all, especially our young people, to put God first and say yes to God. Any opposition to God's will and to God's word is disobedience. But if we practice to use the right tools and exercise our discipline daily into helping us develop spiritually, this will definitely lead us into living lives of integrity. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for granting us this opportunity to have virtual worship. Father God, we come before you asking that you provide us with the right tools so that we may live a life of discipline and integrity. Lord, please remind us that your truth will last a lifetime and that we must choose to live a life of discipline and integrity. All these things we ask in your name we pray. Amen. Our closing prayer will be done by Reverend Selena Walton Charles, followed by a closing hymn, No, Not One. Good morning, and thanks for joining us in worship this morning as we, the Methodist Church, BVI Circuit, Church at Home, in this COVID-19 period. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for your presence with us in our lives. As we awake from sleep, we are reminded of the many times we have doubted and feared judgment in this act of worship. We experience the songs and the scripture reading and the spoken word, we realize that our fears are gone. Because we remember the message of hope in the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Holy Father, remind us. Remind us, Lord, of all that we go through in life, through the troubles, the doubts and the fears. You remind us, Holy Spirit, that you are all powerful, merciful and loving to us. Sometimes, oh God, we are joyous when we receive you into our lives, but yet there's a doubt of guilt troubling our minds. It seems so easy to slip away into darkness and doubt, the darkness of doubt, Lord. Remove the confusion of the downward path, but shine your bright light of joy upon us, Lord. Lighten our dark paths and help us to believe, even though we have not seen you touch our hearts our character, our hearts, that you can de discipline us by your grace. Help us always to proclaim your Son Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives. 
God, you are all giving, all redeeming, our refuge. You are our friend. We thank you, Lord, so much for your son. Even though we live in this troubled world, we are reminded that nothing can separate us from your love. Today we rejoice. For you are our refuge provider and you'll make all things new. We thank you, God, for your restorative grace upon us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Gracious God, who has always promised to us, give us the depth of faith and hope that doesn't need to be proved. But in proving, Lord, we offer our love that you have given to us, the hope that you have poured into us so that others may feel the dwelling of your spirit in the darkness of their lives. Arise in us, Christ Jesus. Even as we offer these prayers to you, O Lord, as a token of our life and our substance, take these gifts, O Lord, and work it in this world so that we will all be here. We will all influence this world as we reconcile your people to you. Surprising God, we come to you for discipline and this long journey. This long journey of faith would be a light in this world. Examine us, O Lord, and set us free. Set us free from the confusion of our minds and call our lives to be one like you from the inside, even, O Lord, as we end this Youth Week 2020, the season of lockdown, Remind us of the signs of your son, Jesus Christ, in the power of resurrection that is all around us. Remember, this day, dear Lord, you are our friend. Remember, O oh Lord, those who are suffering from the illness of COVID-19, the coronavirus, and have lost lives. Lord, help those who are grieving, comfort them. Comfort those who are lost. Comfort those who are alone and separated from friends and family. We ask your Holy Spirit to empower and reach everyone with your divine compassion. Help us, O oh Lord, and lift us into the new life at the end of this season. For anywhere we go, O oh Lord, there may be dangers and wars and strives, but we pray for your peace. That even in the parts of warfare and danger, the good news will vanquish the pains of our community and our territory lord we ask you to give compassion to our leaders wisdom to the spiritual leaders remembering oh lord that all our lives rest in you for all we ask oh lord we ask today for an extra portion of your faith so when doubts want to seep in and arise, we will be convinced and emerge strong as witnesses of your love in Christ Jesus. Help us as we pray this day. Help us, O oh Lord, to receive your will. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And in this closing act of worship, I ask you to receive the benediction and go forth in blessings, receiving God's triumphant gift to you. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ, the love, the redemptive savior of the world, the giver and comforter of life, fill you with the spirit of love. This day as you walk a life of discipline and integrity, spreading hope to all the world. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, I want you to know that you are not alone. No, not alone. So as we sing, fill our hearts, fill your hearts with God's love and promise of peace. Enjoy the rest of this song. No, never alone. Amen. <laughs> 